If you haven't gotten your copy of Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous, then head on over to Amazon right now. It could be on its way to your house or into your device before I'm done introing this next episode. This week, we're joined by Gabby Keegan, who is the voice behind the Moxie podcast. She and I chatted for a bit a while back on her show, and I wanted to bring her on to our show and jam together about some of the bravery it takes to consider your day job a work of patronage. And also, what does it mean to be an introvert in an extroverted job? And how do we find sanity in a crazy career career world? Career world. That's a hard word to say a couple times over. Before we get into all that, I want to let you know, you guys, the book is out. It's on Amazon. It's out in the world. It's on, you can get it at Powell's Books. You can get it at Books a Million. You can get it on Barnes and Noble. You can get it on Amazon. Amazon's the big place to get it because that's the only place where the digital, the ebook version is available. And if you're listening to this episode on the week that it comes out or the week that the book came out, then most likely that Kindle book is on sale. So go get your brave little fingers on it. It is not just me saying that you should get this book. There are also a lot of other readers of the book who have already sent me unsolicited, really heart-wrenching thank you letters. And also people on our on our book launch team who, yes, they're biased, but also they didn't have to say those words in the reviews on Amazon. Like, honestly, I'm blown away by the reception of this book. So I'm inviting you to join in because it's a crazy, awesome experience and I would love to have you on board. So go to Amazon and get your physical copies or your digital copies and just know that the audiobook is on its way. We had some um, setbacks with the files getting approved by Audible and so we're getting that taken care of. They're taking their sweet time though, but that's good. We have to have quality in the world. That's part of being brave is standing up for and to being defiant about the things that you expect in the world. So I'm actually okay about it. <laughs> Although I would love for you to have an audiobook right now, but that's coming. If you want to know if the audiobook is like your very supreme preference of reading books or consuming books, and you're not on the email list yet, then I recommend that you go to emilyannpeterson.com and get on the waiting list, not on the waiting list, get on the mailing list so that you can wait for the email that I'll send out when the audiobook is available. So if you want a reminder about that, get on the mailing list for that. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the show. I welcome Gabby Keegan. You're listening to Bare Naked Bravery, a weekly podcast hosted by me, Emily Ann Peterson. As a singer, songwriter, author, teaching artist, and creative entrepreneur, I encounter some really fascinating stories. I'm on a mission to reveal the depth and width of bravery and its benefits to creatives like yourself. More than ever today, our world needs bravery, unique bravery from everyone. This is the place where you find it. There is no script or censorship today because that's how these facets of bare naked bravery are in real life. So if you're listening with little ears nearby, please know that some episodes may contain mature language and subject matter. One of the easiest ways you can share bravery with the world is to send this episode to a friend or two. Send them an email, text, or tweet. Tag them in one of my Instagram posts. My handle is Emily Ann Pete. Or leave us a review on iTunes. It takes seconds and can be done from your phone right now. Again, we need more bravery in the world. So let's be brave together. Okay, so I listened to our episode that you we recorded on your podcast where you interviewed me. And so here mm-hmm. we are. I'm interviewing you. <laughs> the end of that episode kind of turned into a little bit of a coaching call, which was pretty cool. And so I figured that I wanted to get an update on like what happened in your life after we did all of that Mm -hmm. because you had some pretty mind blowing 
moments of clarity. Yeah, for sure. What were some of the most like top of mind moments or things that were changing? Yeah. Well, the main thing was, you know, just the thing you said about thinking of your day job as, or your employer as a patron for everything else you really want to do. (laughs) So that just like totally changed my mindset. And just, yeah, especially when I was about, like, it was a perfect time for me to hear that because I was about to start this job where I'm commuting now, like, I'm gone 12 hours a day in an office, you know, so stuck in a car like uh, two and a half hours usually a day. And so I could be so pissed about that. And like everyone that I talk to about it is super like, oh, well, are you going to stay there? Like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, no, I'm really excited about it. And it's great. And like this commute is actually calming and I get to listen to my podcast and I get to brainstorm for my own uh, podcast and whatever. So yeah, I mean that just immediately kind of clicked into effect for me. How, cause I'm just curious, cause I do the same thing. Like I have my passion projects and I have clients that I really love and I really enjoy working with. But there was a moment, and we kind of talked about this in on your Moxie podcast, there was this moment that happened like last spring or so with me where I realized, oh, because I was kind of struggling as an art, as a musician with like, oh, I'm not get, I don't have enough patrons. Like I would like more patrons. Mm-hmm. And then it occurred to me that every student I've had every client I've had, every corporate client that I've worked with, every event that I get paid to go and do, they are a patron. They may not be like a regular patron. They may not be supporting me in the ways that our like modern music industry considers as patronage, where it's just here, take my money and, you know, Mm -hmm. I'll be happy. But there's the traditional patronage model is still alive and well. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of job are you doing and why do you like it so much? It's not even that I like the job. I, um, I'm i like basically managing, just managing a staff of workers and doing like HR stuff and blah, 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 like pay. I mean, just all that BS. So it's not exciting. It's like still outside of my realm of passion or whatever, but still, you know, I got out of a situation that was, you know, keeping me like working from home for four and a half years before this was, was great for a while, but I think it just stifled me after a while and I wasn't getting. How so? I just got like stuck in a rut, like totally stuck in a rut. It was a really small company and, you know, I was just kind of doing the same things and just hitting walls and the company wasn't growing. So like, you know, maybe I would have gotten more out of it and been able to like stay more sane even though it wasn't something I was passionate about. But if I felt like, you know, my work meant something in some way, then it would have been more tolerable, but that wasn't the case. So yeah, it was that. And then, yeah, just after, yeah, four years of working from home, like is fine. But I also am super appreciative for being in an office now. And it just forces me to... (laughs) <laughs> it forces me to like be social and not, you know, fall into too much of my introvert side and burrow myself away in my in my room for days. Totally. Yeah, there's there's a very fine line. I mean, we all have we all have different personality types, mm-hmm. right? Have you done any of the Myers Briggs or Enneagram things? I have, and I get different results. <laughs> yeah. So I don't really have like a steadfast. Totally. Well, especially with Myers Briggs, I mean, because those those qualifications are on a spectrum, right? Mm-hmm. So you're on a spectrum between introvert and extrovert, and right. depending on a season of life, you might test differently, right? Yeah. And your tendency, you have a, te- you usually have a tendency though, but I, I would totally agree with you. Like there have been seasons of life for me where I, I mean, this is the case. So I've been writing this book and have been totally in introvert mode, mm-hmm. but now I'm really excited about 
getting out there. And by out there, I mean actually like off my little island, literally off my little island and into the rest of the world Mm -hmm. doing shows and actually being amongst other people. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm looking forward to it, even though I totally adore, have adored this little season of being holed up and and being an introvert. Yeah. Very much an introvert. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. I'm kind of on the cusp of that. So like, I'm. it's the same, like you got to have a little bit of both and you got to know when it's time to turn a leaf and time to like sprinkle in some more socialization. But yeah, it's, you know, a fine line for sure. Like you said. Going from your previous job to this job, what was the trigger to make you decide to do that? Well, I've been looking for a while, so I've just been really unhappy. Like I kind of had, like I started a couple of months ago, right before this job ended, I was like getting panic attacks. I lost like 15 pounds apparently that I didn't notice because I was just like waking up every day so anxious, like just that pity your stomach anxiety that, you know, you can't, you like don't want to eat. I was like just chain smoking and like trying to get through the day. And (laughs) yeah. So, and then I just started having panic attacks. I had to like go to the doctor and like fucking be subscribed clonopin. And she just took one look at my blood pressure and she was like, girl, you need to fucking like chill out. I know your job is stressful, but this is not like you can't keep going like this. So luckily, like I was at a point where I, you know, was already job searching and I kind of had something, something in the works. And then they, my old job fired me. So wow. Yeah, it was great. They actually, it was really shitty because it was like about a month after like all of this stuff was happening where I was super stressed out. And I like, I missed a meeting and I told my boss when I had a conversation about why I told her, Hey, I'm, I'm really stressed out. Like just one moment of honesty with her. And then from there she was like, okay, I'm going to reevaluate everything. Like, we'll take stuff off your plate, da da da. And then like less than a month later, she set up a call with me about my job description and then just like fired me over the phone in 10 minutes. Oh gosh. Yeah. So, and it was like, it was directly related to like me telling her that I was stressed out. So, I mean, which I mean, I find it really interesting that now you're working in HR. <laughs> well, I know I kind of yeah. I, I've been HR adjacent, I guess, for the last couple of years, like recruiting and stuff like that, and management. But yeah, not now. I'm definitely more like neutral HR. So yeah, it's just so amazing because I've gone through a season of my life where I was, had just started going to a therapist who was do actually doing real work and just digging up a lot of really old gunky Mm. shit that, you know, and it made the rest of my life more like heavy, you know? Yeah. I don't have another word, but it just made the rest of life seem like there wasn't a lot of room for other things in my life, you know? Sure, because you're processing so much. Totally. And so the way that that affected my job was like my tolerance level for stress or for other people being idiots or my boss being weird or an idiot, you know, like my tolerance level for that was just so low, just really low. (laughs) Yeah. So like, I, you know, I look back on that time and go, wow, if I ever have an employee (laughs) that's going through a season like that, I wouldn't want to have them as an employee. Right. Yet, I'm really grateful that my boss was so kind and and quite honestly lenient about an, an understanding of she's going through a tough time. She's going through a tough time. That's Let's nice. like help get some other people in on this. And and I think that's a lot like as a as a boss, there's or I should say now being a boss, there's that weird like how tolerant as a boss can you be for your employees mm-hmm. needs? I because at the end of the day, the emails need to get sent. Yeah. And yet. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, but I do think, you know, there's, 
in your case, it sounds like there should have been more, even like outside of work support. Like, yeah. hey, we see you're stressed out. Oh, we've got a, a program or a system oh, you, yeah. you're happy to take. That'd or, be nice. <laughs> right? They were so like, I'm talking like six person operations team. So they had none of that. We didn't even have HR. Like, I would have had to sue them to do anything about it, you know? Right, right. <laughs> well, but I think like for, you know, those of like the business owners that are out there listening to this, the business owners that are out there listening to this, it would be really helpful to kind of take an account of like what's happening in your employees' lives or kind of checking in, mm -hmm. but not on a, not on a, how is your work going, but mm -hmm. how are you the person doing? That's really helpful. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that you obviously don't want to get too comfortable because I've done that before too. And then that is really bad at the same time. You know, it's like, that's a fine line too. But yeah, I agree. In the end, like more companies than not, I feel like, you know, even if, because we did have really good relationships. Like I was good. I was close with my bosses, but I mean, one of them like wouldn't even answer my email when I left. And I was like, Hey, I hope to, we can stay in touch. And like, I'm appreciative of my time there and I get nothing back. And then like, you know, the other one at least gave me a reference, but you know, it's just like email is shut down within two hours or not even, it was 30, like 30 minutes. The email was shut off and I was like, just, that was it. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Cause we talk about rejection a lot on the show. We just, because part of being brave is risking the fact that something might go in a bad direction. Mm -hmm. Right. When you're being brave, you're usually taking a risk um, and sometimes that risk is rejection um, or involves rejection. So what did you do when you were rejected from this job? Yeah, you know, it came like definitely out of nowhere. It was very abrupt to me. But at the same time, you know, I was one foot out to some extent. And so I had like kind of made peace. I mean, I was talking about leaving that job for like the last year and a half. But I was just honestly, the reason that I had stayed so long was because I was so grateful for like the flexibility that they gave me. And I just really loved my bosses so much. And I liked the team that I worked with. And I knew that I wasn't going to get that anywhere else. And so when she called me and, you know, just kind of like dropped the hammer, like I said, within, you know, five minutes of picking up the phone. And basically just said, hey, you're going to, you know, mail your phone back. Today's your last day. You don't even need to finish the day. And, you know, we'll pay you for the next two weeks. So I don't know. It was, I am usually a very emotional person when it comes to like, you know, I had like a, a dramatic job ending before where I was just like super attached to everyone there and whatever. And it was, it was like a, you know, traumatic thing. But with this, I don't know, for some reason, I was just super calm and, you know, just told her I understood and just kind of left it at that. I mean, after, so after your email got shut off, did you like go get Manny Petty's? Did you like... <laughs> No, no, I kind of went to work. I mean, I'm such, I'm one of those people like, you know, I was keeping myself calm, keeping myself in check. Like, all right, I can apply for unemployment. I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to cancel. Like probably literally the first thing I did was I pulled up on, I was sitting, didn't even get up from my chair, like desk. And I just pulled up my Hulu and my Netflix and like, my bills spreadsheet. And I was like, okay, what can I cut out? I don't have money anymore. What can I cut out? <laughs> and so yeah. I just immediately did that and just started. I was just really practical. And I just casually texted like to my now boyfriend and my mm -hmm. best friend here. And I was just like, hey, I just got fired. <laughs> I don't know. It was just maybe like a little bit of shock, but I just kind of got into, I'm in those situations. I'm very like practical. Oh yeah. I mean, me too. In our family, whenever we, when we've had like 
family are also like roommate situations. If we've ever had like a crisis or like somebody hurts themselves and needs to go to the doctor or something like that. My like mentality during an emergency situation is let's do the thing. Yep. Let's do the next thing. And then let's like get, we need to take you like calm down. The crying isn't helping. <laughs> let's get a towel and like hold this and it'll stop the bleeding. Let's go to the, <laughs> let's go to the clinic. Yeah. I'll drive you. And granted, there's still that adrenaline pumping, but on the outside, it's very, let's do the next appropriate thing on the list. Yeah. And you're just kind of like the calm driving force there. But I will say there, I have had, definitely have had my moments where you're going through a crazy season or a crazy moment and you just lose it. Like you can't. Oh, totally. I mean, when this, like when something like this happened, it was like five years, like five years ago, I was in, you know, my, I was 22, 23 and I got walked out of my office after, and I had a job lined up. Like I voluntarily left. They still, or voluntarily like put in my two weeks, but they still walked me out and like embarrassed me in front of a hundred people. Uh, and so I was bawling during that. So trust me, like five years ago, I would have, I was a, such a hot mess. I immediately went after to Chili's for two for one margaritas and just like got shit faced with my coworkers and they dropped me off of my house and that, and just, I was a complete mess for a while. <laughs> yeah. So I find it really interesting that you did, you know, granted the two situations were very different, mm-hmm. but I find it really interesting that, that do you think it was age that contributed to a different response? I think so. I think now I'm trying really hard to separate myself from my work and I've, you know, learned a few lessons on, you know, your friend, your coworkers are not your friends and you really like, it's a really dangerous thing to like cross over those two because you, if you trust the wrong people at work, like you are really going to make things messy for yourself. And so I think, yeah, I think I learned a few lessons and that really helped. We'll get back to the bravery at hand in a second, but I wanted to remind you that I first began having these conversations both on and off the podcast because I was curious about what bravery actually meant, if we could build it, if so, with what ingredients. And I was so curious, I turned my research and personal stories of experiences with feats of bravery into a book. That book is called Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous, and it's now available in multiple formats on Amazon right now. So go get yourself a copy of Bare Naked Bravery, How to Be Creatively Courageous, and after you read it, let me know what you think. Let's take take a completely different turn. Okay. So now you're doing, now you've got this great full-time job out in an office, you're not working at home. How does bravery look different in that job than it did in the previous job? Oh my God. I was just talking about this for the episode that I put out today. I was just recording the intro at my office (laughs) and I was talking about how like, you know, so I'm back in this corporate environment for the first time, da da da. And basically my job is to like, I have to meet like hundreds of people and like meet all these managers and basically win them over and make pretty much make everybody like me. Like I'm supposed to be the good guy around, you know, and just support everyone. And so I, and, and being that I was at home and, you know, I was in a similar position, but I was never having to like really interact in person with people and be that schmoozer to that extent. And so I am just, I've just been in introvert mode so long that I don't even know. Like I find myself, you know, just wanting to hide away in my office and I know that obviously that's not going to cut it. So I'm just having to like scramble to try to tap into my little bit of extrovert that uh, I need right now. How, cause this is a really good topic. What are some of the ways that you are currently using or building that extrovert muscle? Well, I mean, I really just am forcing myself to, there's certain things I can handle. Like, like for example, 
I'm sending out a bunch of email invitations today to set meetings with managers for next week. So like a set time, you know, 20 minutes, I'll come by your office, like a quick and easy intro, usually just fluff like that. Okay, I can do. But you know, throughout the day, I was like, I one guy emailed me back and he was like, Oh, can you stop by right now? I'm downstairs. And I'm like, Oh, God, no, I cannot do that. <laughs> like, that gives me <laughs> such anxiety. I need at least 24 hours to know that it's coming and to look you up and to like write down my notes. Yeah, so like, that is that is a yeah definitely an example of what I kind of can handle. That's totally and that's really good. Is that using or acknowledging that boundary mm-hmm. that you need at least twenty four hours or twenty minutes to take notes and kind of snoop on or stalk the mm-hmm. person. So you kind of are basically giving yourself enough time to like accommodate yourself. Yeah, because. In order, like, I mean, if the, you know, extrovert, if the outgoing side of myself, it just, it's not accessible right now. So I need time to like reach into that. I need time to like amp myself up and to just feel, if I don't feel super prepared, then I'm not going to be confident and I'm not going to be, I can't be outgoing without feeling confident. Now, let me ask you this because everybody has a different answer for this or mostly different answers. When you say you're an introvert, what makes that a strength? Hmm. I think for introverts, actually, you know, I don't think being an introvert or an extrovert is a strength or a weakness. I think they're just personality types or tendencies that just require different things to balance them out to some extent. You know what I mean? Like for me as an introvert, I need X number of nights to myself in order to like balance out the time I spend with my boyfriend or my friends or doing other things. Well, I mean, I I think what I was getting at is there are some people who recognize that being an introvert allows them a particular like superpower of like a listening skill or something like that. Or being an extrovert gives them this uncanny ability to walk into any room and shake anyone's hand and make a friend with anyone. Oh God. Wow. But if if there were a superpower that were involved with your type of introvert or like the way that you show up in the world, what would that be? Actually, I would say that when I do, like when I do get it myself into my outgoing, like mode or whatever and just get into that mindset like my superpower is that I can make like charm anybody in a room for sure what about the introvert version I think it's a I honestly I think it's a superpower to be able to like be okay by yourself like I can you know I have no problem like going on business trips alone like sleeping in hotel rooms alone going you know traveling alone and eating alone and living alone you know and a lot of people I know can't do that. So I feel like I feel like that's a superpower. So let me ask you this. Is there a way you can take I agree with you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is there a way you can take that superpower and infuse it into an extroverted situation? Good example of how the two meld is for example, when I am traveling alone, you know, I'm introverted to the to the extent that I'm gonna like probably eat dinner at my hotel bar alone instead of like going out with whoever. But while I'm there and there's someone else sitting alone, like I can definitely chat them up and like still make a new friend, you know, Mm -hmm. I think that's, I just do better on -on one-on-one situations. And I think that is because I am like a combination of the two. So that's kind of my sweet spot (laughs) is just like me alone and then finding somebody else alone. And I, it always works out. So this is something that I've done when I, you know, cause I am an extroverted introvert. I do enjoy spending time by myself, but when I am in the midst of other people, I can, I can do pretty mm-hmm. okay, you know, but there are those moments like having somebody go, Hey, can I drop by really quick? That's, that's an absolute <laughs> no. That's a perfect example of something that would push my comfort zones. Mm-hmm. But I have, no, you know, my, or I have found that in my career, I will find myself in a situation where I'm outside of my comfort zone, you know, and the easiest way to find that comfort again is to go back in and try to find that sense of feeling okay within myself. Do you know what I mean? That like sense of, it's just me in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
we are, you know, like, it's just me in this body. We're just here eating, you know, eating soup and <laughs> watching Cheers or whatever is on Netflix, you know. But I know how that feels. Like, physically, I know how that feels in my body to be okay with myself or be alone with mm-hmm. myself. And so when I'm then out in the rest of the world or I find myself in a uncomfortable situation, at least knowing where – it feel or how it feels to be back in that, you know, okay place that empowers me to continue on in the conversation that I'm having with somebody that's like maybe out of my comfort zone because I know that like, I know where home base is basically. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. It's kind of a elusive technique, but I mean, it really helps me, you know, like when I'm shaking hands or glad handing or be at a conference or something. Oh my God. How do you survive those? I just don't. Well, this is how. (laughs) (laughs) Like I, when I'm walking through a big, like, so say I'm walking through a big conference exhibit hall with a lot of tables and booths and things like that. I just try to get really still inside my body. Even if I'm walking through the room, I get really still in my body and try to find that sense of, it's just me here. Mm-hmm. I'm just watching Netflix and chilling <laughs> like, <laughs> and walking around the room trying to embody that sense of it's all right. It's just me here. That makes it feel so much better. And I'm actually able to then look around more and be more observant of the rest of the world around me, which I think is actually a, a great introvert superpower too. Yeah. Oh, for sure. As being really observational. I know. And that's... <laughs> That's what makes me think that I'm not like the ultimate introvert at all because I'm so not typically very observant. Like I, you know, unless I'm really concentrating on it, you know, if I pick out something that I'm interested in, then I'll observe it. But my brother is a classic example of introvert and he just like drops knowledge on me constantly. Like, oh, you didn't know that that was there. You didn't know that they had that habit. You didn't know that this and that. I'm like... Wow, you know what? You are just seeing world, the world through a different lens than I am, <laughs> and that's that's great. I think that, but that's the thing is that I think each of us and our personality types give us these extra superpowers. Totally. And if we can pull those superpowers into a moment where we're feeling out of our comfort zone, then just naturally we'll probably feel more comfortable because we are like working within our quote unquote zone of genius. Right. You know? Okay. So let me, before we wrap up, I want to hear a little bit about the genesis of your podcast, which is called Moxie. Mm -hmm. Why did you start this thing and when did you start it? Tell me all about it. Sure. So I started and I got the idea when I moved, I had moved from Minneapolis where I was pretty much raised my whole life and moved shortly after a couple of years after college, took a pit stop in Tennessee. So I just dropped everything, moved down there with a car full of stuff. And then from there, I moved here to San Diego with the same like Toyota Camry full of stuff. And I just was starting over completely. And everyone around me was so like, oh my God, how, how could you ever do this? Like, I don't, you're so brave. You, you know, are really taking a risk here. I could never do that. And I'm just thinking, you know, anytime anyone would make a comment like that to me, I'm like, but you, like anyone could do that. Like if I'm talking to my friends that are, have the same circumstances as me and like, you really have the same freedom as me. I just feel like you don't see that as an option in your brain for some reason. I could go into a million reasons why I think that (laughs) that is ingrained in our brains, but so I, that was kind of the idea behind it was I really wanted to write about, I, I wanted to start the blog and podcast and just share different stories of, of women mainly who, you know, took those leaps and aren't, weren't afraid to start over and just kind of live the most badass versions of their lives and be authentic and talk about things like being, you know, mentally ill and trying to run a business at the same time, you know, and things like that. And, you know, starting over and then maybe having your family resent you for it. But also just the inspiration behind those women and the fact that they did make it on the other side. And most of them or all the ones that I've talked to so far, I don't regret it at all. So yeah, just basically sharing the motivation, you know, for my own sake and for those people back in Minneapolis that, you know, were so in awe of my decision and didn't think that they could do it themselves. I just really wanted to to show them that they could. Yeah. Uh, that's so powerful that we, 
I mean, because I've definitely had friends and community members who have seen what I do or seen what I've done and have said the same thing like, oh my gosh, I could never do that. Or, oh, it's so crazy that you're doing that. And yet they're in the same breath almost expressing how uncontent they are in their own lives. <laughs> and I am so grateful that I have had moments that push me and nudge me into a different season and a different situation, different circumstances. So I I can't really take credit for any of the brave things that I've done, but I can take credit for the fact that I had that power of choice to act on it, right? And I really, I admire the fact that you're trying to highlight that kind of stuff in the rest of the world. So this has been so great, Gabby. Um, I'm so glad that you got to join us. So thank you so much. You guys, if, if you want to go check out Gabby's podcast, go do it. It's on iTunes. It's called Moxie Podcast. It's really fun. M-O-X-I-E. It's a really great one. Your brave takeaway from today's show is to go get yourself a copy of Bare Naked Bravery, the book. The book is here from Amazon. (laughs) Truly, if you are listening to this episode on the week the book released, then there are launch deals you'll want to take us up on. So head over to Amazon, either Amazon UK, Canada, Australia, wherever you're listening, and go get the book for yourself because we would love to have you have it. And you probably want it too. If you've been listening to the show for a while, then you'll probably want to read this book. (laughs) It's filled with everything that we've been talking about for years and years. So um, yeah, go grab it. Other than that, Gabby and I would love to hear all about your favorite parts of today's Bare Naked Bravery episode. You can find Gabby and myself on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and all the other things. Just go ahead and tag us so that we can cheer you on and see what you're up to. Gabby is on Instagram at Moxie San Diego. And on Facebook, Moxie San Diego, same thing. And go check out her podcast. It's really good. I think you'll really enjoy it. So that's our show this week. Uh, I want to thank you again for listening. Um, We have put all the links in the show notes for today's episode. So go over to barenakedbravery.com for those show notes. And if you are listening and you enjoyed this episode and this podcast as much as we enjoy making it for you, then please give us a review and rate the show in your iTunes desktop app or on your podcast app on your phone. It really does help us out a lot more than it is a hassle for you, and it's worth it. And if you purchase the book, same goes for Amazon reviews, too, because reviews, like in iTunes and in Amazon, there are algorithms that are based on the number of reviews that a show or a book has. And if we juice that algorithm, then more people who need and want to hear the show will be able to find the show. And you are a part of that. So all of this des- bravery that we talk about on the show and in the book it deserves to be spread as far and as wide as possible. And you are definitely a part of that. If you are digging the music in today's episode, that's because it's brought to you by Lee Rosevere. And if you are curious about all that, go to barenakedbravery.com forward slash sponsors, and you'll learn all about our other artists, musicians, and other sponsors of the show. I am so looking forward to being with you next week. We have some super awesome things in store for you. Until then, I have one message for you. It's this, be yourself be vulnerable, be brave, because the world needs more of your bare naked bravery.